Hello and welcome to Dash. We are your hosts, Francesca, Shauna, and I'm Ashara. And today we have a really awesome guest for you, and I'm sure he's going to love what we've got in store for him. All the way here from Dublin, it's Terry McMahon. <laughs> hey, Terry. How was your flight, Terry? Was it beautiful? Was it lovely? <laughs> Easy, an hour long, and I slept. It was fine. It was fine. Oh, you okay. really loving the arrangement of lights over here? Yeah, I'm liking this director's choice of green, white, and orange. Uh, <laughs> oh my Some God. people would say that's checking the puss, but I say it is beautiful, and be proud of where you're from. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I had to say. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I thought we would start at the very, like, almost the beginning of your career. So you were in a short film called Fault in 1997 according to your IMDB and I would just like to know how the o overall experience was for you. It's a long time ago. Uh, that was a <laughs> short film that was made by a director who ended up making several films and it was one of those things where you feel like something special could be happening and it did and it's that simple fundamental principle that has stayed throughout. You're always looking to be making something special. Yeah. Would you say that's what spurred on the rest of your acting roles? Well, I was curious to know how to work with actors as a director. Mm. And then I ended up being cast a lot as an actor, which was not the intention. But you learn a phenomenal amount about how to work with actors by doing it. And then later, as a director, all the stuff that you've learned becomes applicable. So when did you decide that you wanted to be a director? From early on, but again, I didn't have that birthright or that sense of privilege that tells you that you can do these things. I was homeless for a while and I had all those insecurities and fears that come from that. And then you suddenly realize that despite all your terror and all your fear, there's a passion inside you that you can't control and the only way to give it life is to apply it. Yeah. When you say that you, was, that you were homeless, would you say that's what inspired you to become successful in the future? No, I think when you're homeless, you're, you're driven by a different kind of fear. Mm. And homelessness is kind of, it's like it's contagious. People sense it off you, and it's like that loneliness. They don't want to capture it, or they don't want to be infected by it. So you have to learn how to engage again. You have to learn how to take simple choices and Definitely, yes, make yeah. them work. You would run into a lot of characters, with, like on the streets as well. Like, mm. did you learn, like, did you take anything from the people that you met, either like the public or like other homeless people? Well, this, the fundamental principle of engaging on a humanistic level. I think it applies to all of us in everything we do, especially as people who are trying to be creative artists. As long as you don't forget that it's a humanistic pursuit, you're okay. But the moment you turn it into an egotistical pursuit that's about you and not a humanistic engagement, you're in trouble. And that humility is taught to you on the street. Yeah. You're such a wise man, I must yeah, say. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> so definitely. You just sit there and talk and everyone's just like, wow. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> Um, we're also aware that you played a small part in Batman Begins, yeah. Oh <laughs> <laughs> That's a big movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Feel, like overwhelmed. The no, fact it's that you it's funny because, there. again, I'm sure it applies to everybody in the room, but the fundamental principle doesn't change. That's a $100 million movie, mm. or you're making a $100 Euro movie. What happens in front of the lens of the camera, capturing lightning in a bottle, that cliche, that's all that matters. And again, that humanistic engagement between two or three characters is all that matters. And no matter how high or low the budget, that fundamental principle doesn't change. But something like Batman Begins, I can't comprehend why they put me in it. I can't comprehend <laughs> why I still get checks for it, but I'm not complaining. Yeah, but it's true. When I, when, I, when I found that out, I kind of like, was like, like, oh my God. And like, because you put it, like, it was, it was a small role and you had a role as a cop. It was kind of like you were right there and on the action kind of. It was a non-existent role. It was an extra role. I don't know why they paid me so <laughs> much money. I don't know why they flew me back and forward. I don't know why I still get sex out of being in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, Terry. Terry, you're so <laughs> not loose. Like, I just don't get it. Can you, you know. at least crack a smile or smile? No. no. Okay. <laughs> okay, Terry. Is that your smile just saying like? <sighs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but how was your overall experience on Batman? Again, absurd and ridiculous, and you're immersed in the realm of fantasy, and you're planting bombs and blowing up background asylum, and you're walking into... Did you find that fun? I found it absurd. Oh, okay. <laughs> also, I, I think it's absurd that I was cast as a guy who's supposed to walk into a room of 200 SWAT 
guys, all of whom would beat me within an inch of my life in five seconds, and I'm supposed to be their leader. But that simple principle of suspension of disbelief turns impossibility into magic. Talking about absurd, I find Charlie Casanova has a lot of nude scenes. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say that as well. Is there something you want to tell us, Terry? <laughs> Do you want to tell the audience anything? Like, <laughs> About why, why all that nudity was there? Uh, <laughs> if there's anybody in the room who doesn't like, like nudity, then I think they're missing out on something. But okay, <laughs> I agree. I <laughs> love nudity. Who doesn't? Do you like okay. nudity? I just a wee bit. Yeah. Like nudity? Just okay. a little bit, maybe. <laughs> No, but just also with something like Charlie Casanova, <laughs> you're talking about uh, something that's raw, something that's supposed to be... Very raw. Mm -hmm. These characters exist in a delusion. Charlie Casanova was one of the most despised movies in history, so it was fascinating to see the level of extremity and emotional response that it seemed to generate. But part of that rawness was putting people in a situation where they were naked, and the nakedness was not about genitals or pornog pornographic approach. It was about what happens when somebody is left in a situation where they can't hide anymore. What inspired you to write that film? Uh, absolute disgust with our government and the scum who were destroying our country. Mm. Wow, there's a lot of truth yeah. into that movie. Mm. I think, uh, and Charlie Casanova as well, like that was, uh, like you got all your actors and everyone from Facebook as well, which I found really like, like amazing, the fact that people like responded to it so well and we're just like, yeah, I want to be on board this. Yeah, I this wish I got good. that <laughs> Yeah, same. But no. well, it was, again, one of those things where you go, am I going to make a complete fool of myself or not? But you type into Facebook, intend making a movie for next to nothing and just ask people to read the script and they seem to really respond to it. And again, implying to everybody who's here, the movie was made for less than a thousand euros. And the movie ended up being picked up by Studio Canal and released in cinemas in Ireland and the UK. So that, that principle, forget about the content and the extremity of the emotional responses, the fact that it's set a precedent where it's possible to make a film for less than a grand that can be released in the cinemas should be very exciting to everybody who wants to make films. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm. And I was going to say as well, like because of that, it kind of more like inspires people because they're like, oh, I could do this. You know what I mean? If I get a certain amount of money, no matter how much it is, I can make my own film kind of and it can be like yours it can be a big success yeah well again if you have the courage to make a film beyond the imitative nonsense you know you don't, you don't have to make science fiction or you don't have to make hollywood movies and there's nothing wrong with those movies but the kind of movies that come from a more personal place there is somebody out there if they come from a personal truth there is somebody out there who will respond to that mm -hmm. do you know who i want to talk about emmett j scanlon mm -hmm. <laughs> if you guys don't know who emmett j scanlon is he is known as Brendan Brady from Hollyoaks, my sexy villain. <laughs> so, She's how is it? I'm, he's sexy. Like, who doesn't agree with me? Like, <laughs> if he's anyone sexy. knows who he is. <laughs> he's sexy. Like, he is just sexy. Like, hot. That is, you know, that is your <laughs> own <laughs> opinion, Jessica. <laughs> so are you saying that he's sexy? Is that he's what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> How was it working with him, your experience working with him? Sexy. Sexy. <laughs> I feel oh, you. People forget that someone like Scan, as we call him, he's a very close friend of mine, so people think that he is the arrogant swagger of somebody who strolls in and does it and then walks away with indifference. In fact, he works harder than anybody. His level of preparation is staggering. We were the first on the set and the last off the set every night. We were the ones doing the cleaning up with the black plastic bags. His commitment is staggering. His generosity is extraordinary. And he is the antithesis of the egomaniac that very often these kind of actors are depicted as. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think we should kind of st uh, talk about Patrick's Day, your mm. new film coming Patrick's up soon. Day. You could tell us like, briefly about what, like, what it's about for people that don't really know your work as much. Patrick's Day is about a young kid with mental health issues who annually he goes to Dublin with his mother who has infantilized him. She's overly protective, obsessively protective, and she brings him to Dublin once a year for the parade. He was born on March 17th. His name is Patrick. On his 25th birthday, they get separated. He goes back to the hotel, and he meets a suicidal older flight attendant. And before she goes upstairs to commit the act that she'll never return from, she decides she'll make love with one last person. And it doesn't matter who it is. She happens to pick him. And the intimacy they share alters everything for them. But the mother is convinced that love will destroy him because of his mental illness. So she hires a dodgy cop to try and separate them, and she uses his mental illness to convince him that what actually happened never existed. That sounds oh, wow. so interesting. Does anybody yeah. else think, oh my God, like, that sounds oh amazing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It does. I think, 
Um, unfortunately, Terry, sorry to cut you off, but we have to end it now. Um, we've had a very good time interviewing Terry with us today, and I am hope you guys enjoyed your time with him as much as we have. Uh, if you would like to check out his film, Charlie Casanova, you can find it on Amazon.co.uk. And Terry's new film, Patrick's Day, comes out February the 6th. So make sure you check it out. It's going to be an absolutely brilliant film. But for now, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>